cool. Hey guys, Devin here with Make Anything. And in a previous video, I did some experiments with melting down some failed prints and excess plastic from the 3D printing process to see if I could give it a second life. I ended up with these crazy sheets of multicolored plastic that look kind of awesome on their own, but uh, I, knew that I, I knew that I wasn't done. I thought I'd revisit the idea today and see if we can actually make something with this material and maybe have some more control over the types of patterns that we get. I mean, this is obviously really cool, but can we maybe have a little more control and come up with some other stuff? I read the comments from the last video and there are a lot of really cool suggestions. I won't even be able to touch on all of them today, but my favorite one was to make some guitar picks. Since this pattern kind of resembles the crazy marbled patterns of some guitar picks that are already out there, but uh, it would be fun to experiment and see if I could come up with some new patterns and make some really cool, unique picks. Now, instead of baking this in my kitchen oven like I did last video, I'm gonna try some, uh, hopefully a little less toxic techniques. I picked up an old toaster oven off the side of the road, so we're gonna see if that'll work. And I also picked up a heat gun since the last video, so that might help give us some control as well. Let's go ahead and see what I can come up with. So on the left there, you can see the toaster oven I was talking about. And I basically wanted to continue where I left off in the last video. So I started in a very similar way, taking this pan, spraying it with MR150, which is a mold release, and then filling it with plastic. I'm using these strings of filament that are the purged material at the beginning of prints. I figured since the strings are pretty consistent and very thin, they would melt quickly and consistently. So I just packed those into the bowl and I chopped things up a bit just so that I could pack it a little more densely and get things to stay inside of the pan. I'm really just guessing the amount of plastic I'm gonna need in order to get a flat, thin sheet. And then I put the toaster oven onto its max settings. I had to bake this for quite a while in order to get the plastic to really melt flat. It took 28 minutes, and by that time, the plastic was pretty burnt. But really, that was the least of my worries because the plastic just would not come out of the pan. I tried bending it like crazy, I tried putting it in the freezer and doing all kinds of stuff, but I just could not get the plastic out of this pan. So for my next attempt, instead of ruining more pans, I decided to use this little metal cutter and cut some sheets of aluminum to basically make my own trays for melting the plastic. So I cut it to an appropriate size and then just bent the corners in and made a makeshift box so that the plastic wouldn't leak over the edges, as I wasn't sure how fluid it would become. I also wrapped the outside in aluminum foil just to seal those edges, just in case. So once again, I sprayed that MR150 in there. I was pretty generous this time because I didn't want it to stick. And then I basically tried the same thing, chopping up those little bits of plastic and then baking them in the oven. Although I did lower the temperature slightly to 390 degrees Fahrenheit, just to see if that would help. This time around, I only left the tray in there for 18 minutes and that kept the plastic from burning and it also made sure that I could remove it. Although it was still pretty rough on the top end, so I needed to change my technique a bit if I really wanted a smooth surface on both sides. So this time around, I cut another piece of aluminum, slightly smaller, and then sprayed that with mold release as well. And then I used that to squash the plastic from above. I think because the top sheet of aluminum was cold and I just didn't act quickly enough, that the plastic cooled down really fast and it didn't really flatten the top as much as I was hoping. So there were some extra flat spots, but overall it was still pretty rough. But it is progress, so we can keep moving forward. At this point, the aluminum was already starting to warp a bit. And since I wanted a really flat surface, I decided to try using glass. So this time around, I ended up cutting up the plastic and piling it on top of the mirror. But that wasn't very well thought out because the plastic ended up seeping underneath the mirror and trapping it inside of the plastic. So that prompted me to break out the heat gun First of all, just to scrape this away and get the mirror out, but I figured it might be another tool that I could use to melt the plastic. This piece was really tough to get off the glass, but it did come out pretty smooth. Since I had the heat gun out, I decided to experiment with that a bit. So I tried to compose a little design using scrap plastic, 
which the heat gun shriveled up and destroyed. But I still put something together and ended up with this really wild design. And as you can see in this sped up clip, the heat gun is pretty effective at melting the plastic. Here I tried kind of smoothing out the plastic with the spatula, which didn't create the smoothest surface, but it was really nice and thin. And I think I can actually use this to make a pick. So I traced out one of my existing guitar picks, and then I cut that shape out of my little piece of plastic on the bandsaw. Once I had the rough shape cut out, I switched over to hand sanding and smoothed everything out and really fine tuned that shape. So here's my first pick and I think it's super cool. I love that both sides are very different but they share the same color palette. But does it play? I gave the pick a good 30 minutes or so of rough guitar playing and it did wear down a bit but I think it held up surprisingly well considering this is melted PLA which is supposed to be a pretty brittle plastic. But I think it could last for quite some time especially if you're doing some more gentle guitar playing. So back to the studio, I went ahead and tried some new techniques. Here I used a thin sheet of white that was a raft from a print that I made, and I sprinkled some filament bits on top of that. The plastic came out thin enough that I was able to forgo the bandsaw and just use a pair of scissors to cut it to shape. Back to the heat gun, I decided to try squashing the plastic from above again this time using a mirror. I quickly squashed the mirror on top and used quite a bit of force, and the piece I got was really nice and smooth on both sides, although a little too thick for making a guitar pick. While we're experimenting, I decided to use that metal cutter and cut some of these sheets of plastic into strips. And I made those into rings by using the heat gun to get the plastic just to the point of being pliable, but not really melting. And then I just wrapped it around the handle of this chisel to get a nice round shape. The colors are kind of crazy, but it works pretty well. Here's my sister modeling a few of the other rings that I made. For my next iteration, I figured why not just squash the plastic between two pieces of glass to get a really nice smooth finish on both sides. And that totally worked. As you can see, this process of spontaneous and rapid prototyping leads to rapid improvement. And now that I had a system that worked really well, I was able to start experimenting some more, using different failed prints and interesting structures that my printer created to create all kinds of different designs, like these cool gold and turquoise picks. I realized that it really helps to start with a thin sheet of plastic to kind of have a base to melt more plastic on top of, rather than just using a big stringy mess like I was at the beginning of the day. It was really fun kind of collaborating with the material, trying to compose designs, but then having the plastic act in its own way and having surprising results every time. I'm a pretty big fan of primary colors on white, so these picks are super fun and awesome. Some of my favorites. Now, just because these are shaped like guitar picks doesn't mean they have to function like guitar picks. So I decided to turn some of these into charms by just drilling a hole on one end and connecting it to a keychain. Super simple, but really cool. And by using virtually the same exact technique, you can also make a pretty cool pair of earrings or any kind of jewelry, really. So here's a peek at a bunch of the different picks, charms, and experiments that I came up with. I really like these ones where I swirled in mixes of color on a black base, which ended up creating these really fascinating patterns that give me some cool space vibes. Some of the pieces I created were just too beautiful to cut into smaller bits, so I just left them as these discs that are just fascinating to stare at. I really love how you can see depth in these pieces, especially with that gold filament 
as well as this Matter Hacker's pearlescent PLA, which is that pinkish purplish color you see. Oh, and also just for fun, I made this quick and dirty little phone stand. It's rough, but it actually works pretty well. Well, I've got to say, this technique is super fun and super addicting. I spent a very long day coming up with all these different designs. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making these, because I would love to continue this exploration. And maybe some of you will try it as well and come up with some techniques that you could share with me later down the road. Of course, if you have any ideas for more things that I can make, leave those in the comments. More excuses to keep working on this, right? I really love these. I'm probably going to have to keep some for myself. I'll have a small handful available for sale on my store, and I'm also going to give some away to my patrons. If you're looking for a way to support this channel, Patreon is a great way to do that. You sign up, set up to donate a monthly amount, and with that you get access to some little perks. You get to see some updates on what I'm doing before anyone else. You get to sign up for some exclusive giveaways, but mainly you're helping me continue to make these videos. All right, that's it for this one. A great big thanks for joining. And as always, don't forget to stay inspired. Can I just hook these on like?